Thank you, sir. So, with the permission of my Sanjit Kumar Sahu on the auspicious occasion of Uttala Divas, uh, may I request the uh, registrar to mute the mic? It's echoing. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. So, on the auspicious occasion of Uttala Divas, I, Sanjit Kumar Sahu, welcome you all to the 47th edition of Uttistata. A motivational lecture series that Palahandi University has been organizing has been organizing. So at the outset, may I welcome the president of the meeting, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Palahandi University, Professor Sanjeev, Sanjay Kumar Tattati. May I have the distinct privilege to welcome the invited guest and speaker on the occasion, former Joint Secretary Rajya Sabha. Secretariat and former director, Prime Minister's office, Sri Satyanan Sahu sir. Last week, on the occasion of the second extramural lecture, they delivered a wonderful talk in person on the in the on the university campus. And the topic was law and uh, nation building. It was quite a motivating motivating motivational talk for the students of the university. So today we have another opportunity to listen to him on the 47th audition of Uttishtata. And today he's going to talk about Gandhi, Gopobandhu and Madhuva. So with these words, I welcome the invited guest on the occasion, the speaker on the occasion. I also welcome Registrar of Kalahandi University, Sri Pitambara Bhai sir, Controller of Finance, Sri Suresh Pidisika sir, Chairperson, PG Council, Major Dr. Jaydev Sahusar, Ms. Vidishamun, Madam, Faculty of English Department, Ms. Lipsa Morana and Acclaimed Singer, all the dignitaries and elite citizens who have been joining this program uh, from several editions. I welcome my adorable students of the university and my esteemed colleagues and senior faculty members of the university. With this, may I request Ms. Lipsa Morana to sing the welcome song. Over to Lipsa Morana. Thank you so much, sir. I'm going to ask you 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 Tungo si khori chodo kunjo kano na malo kunjo jodo thi jodo kili utho sogoni Raji ko kano si re bhasi kano kani re aso to kano hoi utkano kubani Tungo si khori chodo kunjo kano na malo kunjo jodo thi jodo kili utho sogoni Raji ko kano si re bhasi kano for the wonderful delivery of the uh, singing of the song. May I now request uh, 
the register of Alahandi University Sri Sitambara Vaisa to address the virtual meet who was to register. Dhanyavad Sao Sar, Samastongo Namaskar. Aji Alahandi Vishwa Vidya Loro Sarchalistam Perona Dai Bakru Tamala Ro Sabhapati Manyavar Vice Chancellor Mahasar Mukhya Bhakta Sujukta Sattanara Sahu Mahasar Vidisa Madam Moon Madam Madam Sarita Bhag Sanji Sahu Sir C.O.F. Sujukta Suresh Pidisika Sir Chairperson PG Council Major Jode Sahu Sir Vishwa Vidya Loro Parivar समस्त सदस्य सदस्य समस्त बुद्धिजीवी समस्त साहित्य प्रेमी बंधुगण विद्यालय रो समस्त छात्र छात्री एवं भौणी लिप्सा आजिर पवित्र उत्कल दिवस ओ कलाहांडी विश्वविद्यालय रो 47 तम प्रेरणादायी वक्तृतमाला उत्तिष्ठतर अवसर रे समस्तंकु नमस्कार समस्तंकु शुभ अभिनंदन आजिर प्रसंग गांधी Gopavandu O Madhuvavu. E Prasangare Aji Param Subhagya Aji Amo Ghana Rachanti Sri Jukta Sausar Sri Amo Saito Premi Bandhu Ghana Manku Ushait Karibhe Buddhiji Manku Ushait Karibhe Vishwa Kalyan Pai Gandhi Gopavandu O Madhuvavu E Dhara Dhamre Janma Ghana Karthile Bhagavan Manishaku Sushti Karichanti सृष्टि करिवा संगे संगे गुटे विराट हृदय देइचंती एवं हृदय रूपक बगीचा रे आठ प्रकार फूल फुटे देइचंती जो फूल रे बासी होए ना केबे माछी भी बसी परिबने से सेई फूल गुडी को होची अहिंसा होची प्रथम फूल द्वितीय रे सेवा फूल तृतीय रे त्याग फूल दया होची चतुर्थ रूपक फूल पंचम रे होची शांति रूपक फूल एवं सस्तर रे तप रूपक फूल सप्तम रे श्रद्धा रूपक फूल एवं अष्टम रे जितेंद्र रूपक फूल एई आठ प्रकार फूल मध्यरु गांधी जी केवल गुटे अहिंसा फूल को भगवान श्री विष्णु को पाद पदम रे चरण रे से अर्पण करथिले जात द्वारा की हम भारत वर्ष रे से बापू जी नाम रे ख्याति लाभ करथिले सेमिति गोपबंधु सेई आठ प्रकार फूल मध्यरु सेवा फूल को ग्रहण करी भगवान पाकर पाद पद्म रे अर्पण करथिले से सेवा माध्यम रे ओडिसा रो जित पूरा पल्लीर प्रत्येक घरे घरे सुपरिचित लाभ करथिले एवं मधु बाबू से त्याग रूपक फूल को भगवान पाकर अर्पण करथिले तांकर त्यागपूर्ण जीवन एवं तांकर बलिष्ठ नेतृत्व द्वारा आम ओडिसा आज 1st अप्रैल गोटे स्वतंत्र उत्कल प्रदेश भाषा भित्तिक राज्य गठन रे होइ परथिला तेनु आज रो एही पवित्र दिवस अवसर रे मो समस्त बुद्धिजीवी समस्त साहित्य प्रेमी समस्त गवेषक समस्त छात्र छात्रा मानु को अनुरोध करिवि जे आम समस्त अंकर गुरु दायित्व अछि उत्कल प्रदेश रो उन्नति एवं यही तीनी महात्मा जो तीनी टा फूलों को आदर्श कर थिले तीनी टा फूलों को भगवान पागरे और पान करेगी रिश्व महान हित पार थिले आमे टिके टिके यही जो अष्टमो फूलों को हिली और आठों प्रकार फूलों रू किचि किचि फूलों भगवान पागरे और पान करीबा त्यागो फूलों को और पान करीबा सेवा फूलों को और पान श्रद्धा फूल को अर्पण करिवा जात द्वारा की गुटे सुंदर समाज गठन होई पारिबो सुंदर समाज गठन लेले सुंदर सुनार भारत गठन होई पारिबो सुनार ओडिसा भारत गठन होई पारिबो मु आशा करूची एवं याही मु प्रार्थना आजिर शुभ अवसर रे शुभ दिन रे मा माणिकेश्वरी पाखरे प्रार्थना करूची मु ग्राम देवी मा डोकरी मा पाखरे प्रार्थना करूची घर देवी मा धनमावली पाखरे प्रार्थना करूची ए भारत रो सुनार भारत गठन हो सुनार राज्य रो गठन हो गुरु मो पार्थना के मोर वक्ते बस शेष कर जो समस्त उनको नमस्कार धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर सच एन एनलाइटनिंग टॉक एंड यू हैव योर एम्फासिस ऑन द एट टाइप्स ऑफ फ्लावर 
that will create the society into a beautiful place to live thank you very much sir for this may i now request ms vidisha moon madam to introduce the guest on the occasion over to vidisha madam thank you sandeep sir samastham ko namaskar honorable vice chancellor kalahandi university professor dr sanjay kumar satpathi respected registrar sri pitambar ho respectful chairperson tg council and head of the department english major dr jaydev sahu distinguished speaker of the occasion sri satyanarayan sahu respected colleagues dear students and guests i vidisha mun on behalf of kalahandi university welcome you all to the 47th motivational talk series utishtatah on the topic gandhi gopavandhu and madhubabu what could be a more beautiful coincidence to commemorate the values of gopavandhu and madhubabu on uttar divas by reminiscing their ideals and contribution towards modernizing odisha gandhi ji gopavandhu das and madhusudan das were stalwarts in their respective fields but had many things in common than one they were fierce nationalists human rights crusaders championed freedom of expression and walked the extra mile to uphold the eternal tenet of vasudeva kutumbakam once gopavandhu das was imprisoned for protesting an alleged case of molestation which speaks volumes about his idea of right and equality similarly madhusudan das advocated for territorial integrity where he walked worked towards integration and unification of odisha today we have amongst us sri satyanarayan sahu a noted gandhian scholar as our speaker who would further put the ideals of gandhi gopavandhu and madhubabu in perspective a student of the collected works of mohandas karamchand gandhi swami vivekananda jawahar lal nehru dr b r ambedkar gopavandhu das and madhusudan das Sri Sahu Sir, late Sri K R Narayanan, President of India, as officer on special duty and press secretary. You had a special tenure as director in Prime Minister's office during 2004-2009, and as joint secretary in Rajya Sabha Secretariat. You have authored numerous articles on Gandhi, and some of the recent articles are Mahatma Gandhi on air pollution and clean air. When K R Narayanan interviewed Mahatma Gandhi. the global significance of champaran satyagraha gandhi sustainable development and environment you have extensively written on diverse and varied aspects of the world view on arm of ambedkar swami vivekananda gopavandhu das and madhusudan das sri sahu has delivered numerous lectures in prestigious national and international universities and institutes particular mention may be made on the invitation you received to deliver lectures in illinois institute of technology and george washington university washington in the year 2003 team indian insights into environmental crisis you have also delivered a lecture in osaka university in 2008 on the theme mahatma gandhi's vision in the context of efforts to face challenges of global warming and climate change in 21st century Many of your articles have been translated to Hindi, Marathi, and Tamil. Currently, Sri Sahu is a guest faculty in several universities in Delhi, including National Law University, Delhi. Thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to introduce such a distinguished personality. Over to you, Sanjeev sir. Thank you very much, Madam, for such a beautiful uh, introduction of the guest on the occasion. So, on behalf of Kalahandi University, without Depriving any more the audience from the speaker, may I now invite Sri Sahu to deliver it. Over to Sri Sahu. Uh, Vice Chancellor, Kalahandi University, Sri Satpathi, Registrar, PG Council Chairman, uh, distinguished faculty members, and all the distinguished participants uh, in this uh, program. So at the outset, let me express my thanks to the Vice Chancellor for organizing this event on the occasion of uh, Uttal Divas and giving me an opportunity to share some thoughts uh, concerning the ideas of Gandhi, Madhubabu, and uh, Gopalbandhu Das, who were three stalwarts of our, you know, of modern India, and whose contributions are. 
of uh, great significance in shaping the destiny of, uh, uh, of our country. So in the beginning, let me address uh, the ideas of these three great uh, personalities of modern India in the context of uh, Utkal Divas, in the context of the formation of you know, Odia, Odisha as a separate state. You know, all of us know that that creation of a state of Odisha, creation of a separate, separate state of Odisha on the basis of language uh, agitated the minds of uh, leaders of Odisha, people of Odisha, right from the beginning of 20th century, right from uh, 1900 onwards. And uh, this is a, a very significant aspect of uh, modern Indian history because the Britishers, they ruled India on the basis of uh, ruled India by creating you know, states or provinces based on their economic uh, conveniences, their administrative conveniences. They merged several you know, areas to form several provinces and thereby ignoring the linguistic basis of, uh, of our provinces. So for instance, Madras province contained territories which are now part of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Karnataka and so on and so forth. So similarly, you know, Odisha was fragmented and uh, parts of Odisha was part of Bihar, part of Bengal, part of Madras province, part of Central province, and so on and so forth. So, you know, Gandhi of all the great leaders of our time, of our, you know, of our freedom struggle of uh, modern India, he in fact uh, took up the cause of uh, linguistic reorganization of provinces. You know, uh, the Indian National Congress also passed a resolution at that time that India should be reorganized on the basis of language. So, so the demand of the leaders of Odisha and people of Odisha that there should be a separate state on the basis of language coincided with that vision articulated by Mahatma Gandhi and articulated by Indian National Congress. So, so therefore the formation of Utkal Sambilan by Madhusudan Das in 1903 you know, became a significant uh, event in the history of India for linguistic reorganization of, of, our, of the British, British provinces. Even around that time, Indian National Congress had championed the cause of linguistic reorganization of states. So Odisha in that you know, context provided leadership that we should have states or provinces we should be created on the basis of language. So in, in doing so, in fact, Madhubabu was you know, acting as a pioneer in the history of India. And the Utkal Samilani, which provided a nucleus for the formation of a separate state of you know, Odisha, you know, that became a trendsetter in, uh, in trendsetter in the whole of India. So therefore, you know, here we find the convergence of thoughts, you know, convergence of thoughts of uh, Mahatma Gandhi and Madhusudan Das. And uh, of course, Utkalmani Gopabandhu you know, also wrote uh, you know, for a separate state of Odisha you know, by bringing together the Uriya's, Uriya speaking tracts, you know, um, which were merged in Bengal, in Central Province, in Bihar, you know, and uh, uh, you know, in Madras Province, and so on and so forth. So here, you know, in the context of Odisha Divas, when you are celebrating Odisha Divas, it is of significance to 
understand uh, the convergence of ideas of Gandhi, Madhusudan Das, and Gopavandhu Das for creation of a separate state of Odisha based on language. But when you say that Odia should be the basis of uh, the, you know Odisha Odisha state, you know then we are mindful of the fact that there are diversities within Odisha, within Odisha. The, for instance, in Kalahandi and Sambalpur, or Western Odisha, people speak of Kosli, and there are tribals who speak of different tribal languages, be it Ho, be it uh, you know Santali, and so and so forth. So Odia language or use of Odia language for separate for creating a separate state of Odisha never meant uniformity. You know, imposition of uniformity, you know, in terms of language on the people of Odisha. So there was adequate space for Koshali, there was adequate, adequate space for other tribal languages. And uh, therefore, you know, when in the, in the central province of which Sambalpur was part, there was a, you know, kind of a order which was issued that Odia should not be used in the courts. And there was protest in the entire Sambalpuri, you know, Sambalpur region. And people demanded a restoration of Odia, you know, in the courts of uh, that part of Odisha. And uh, there was a huge movement and people agitated. And that happened mm -hmm. around uh, 1905-1906 and Madhusudan Das he says that the movement for creation of a separate province of Odisha owed a lot to the people of Sambalpur for agitating for restoration of the use of Odia language. So Sambalpur has played a big role. Western Odisha has played a big role. And Koshali, Koshali language, which is a, a beautiful language, you know, is equal in importance to Odia language. And therefore, the you know, Chief Minister of Odisha, Nabin Patnaik, I think in 2020, and even before that, 2015, he demanded that Koshali should be made part of the eighth schedule of Indian constitution. And he also, also demanded that Ho should be, you know, enshrined in the eighth schedule of the Indian constitution. So therefore, you know, when you talk of Odisha, Odia language, you know, it is, uh, we, we need to be mindful of the equal beauty and importance and majesty of Kosoliri language, Ho language, and many other tribal languages. So it is not uniformity. It is diversity of languages, be it Odia, be it Kosali, be it, you know, uh, Ho, or, you know, so therefore, you know, this diversity of languages, uh, you know, uh, remain integral to the, you know, idea of Odisha or idea of Utkal Divas, which we are celebrating today, you know, in every part of Odisha and outside Odisha as well. So this diversity of languages, you know, was stressed by Gandhi, which was stressed by Utkal Gauru Madhusudan Das, Utkal Mani Gopavandhu Das. So, you know, in many of the writings of uh, Utkal Gaurav, Utkal Mani Gopavandhu Das, in Samaj, he was paying attention to Sambalpuri, you know, uh, the manner in which people of Sambalpur, people of Western Odisha, they communicate in their own way and in a beautiful way. So therefore, you know, uh, Odisha doesn't mean Odia in terms of Odia language, you know, only Odia language which is spoken, let's say, in Puri, Katak, Baleswar, and some other parts, it is also to be, you know, it is coterminous with Koshali language, with whole language, and with diversity of languages of Odisha. So this has to be kept in mind. We are unlike Europe, where in many countries <coughs> of Europe, in the constitution itself, it is stated that one language would be spoken by all people of that state, of that country. So for instance, French constitution, 
clearly states that French would be the language of France. Recently, you know, there are agitations and demands being made by some people of France, you know, to use their regional languages. And, you know, uh, very sensitively, very, you know, sympathetically, that is being hard, but it is never being implemented. You know, on the ground that constitution prescribes only French as the language of France. This means one language is imposed on people. Whereas here in India, we have diversity of languages. Here in Odisha, we have diversity of languages. So that that is the beauty of Odisha. And that is that beauty needs to be celebrated, needs to be part of our celebrations when we you know uphold Utkal Divas, when we rejoice on the occasion of Utkal Divas. Having said that, let me come down to you know the you know the idea of Odisha, which was outlined by the leaders of Utkal Sambilani, by the leaders of Odisha, who not only struggled for independence of India, but also struggled for the separate state of Odisha. You know, in Odia, in the history of Odisha, we had two struggles simultaneously going on. One struggle was to obviously make India free from British rule, and the other struggle was to have a separate state of Odisha. So those two struggles, there are differences of opinion among some leaders. So therefore, many of them, they dissociated themselves from the freedom struggle, you know, for independence of India. They only concentrated on the formation of separate state of Odisha or province of Odisha. Utkarmuni Gopabandhu was part of both these struggles. And Mahatma Gandhi supported the cause of creation of the separate state of Odisha. In 1920, he read an article, he read a book called Oriya Movement. You know, that book was written by Niranjan Patnaik from Aska. I would strongly recommend all of you to read that brilliant book, a small book called Oriya Movement. And Gandhi, after reading that text, he wrote a small article. And the title of the article was Odia movement. He said, Odias are engaged in a movement for creation of a separate province based on their language. And he described Odias as a people who belong to an ancient race. And therefore, he said, such people who formed part of an ancient race would certainly succeed in having their own province. And this is a very significant remark he made that people of Odisha belong to an ancient race. And he recognized in that sense Odia language being part of that ancient heritage of Odisha. So today when we have Odia being recognized as a classical, one of the classical languages of India, you know, Gandhi's, you know, Gandhi's articulation in 1920 in the article Odia Movement, you know, makes us mindful of those great words he articulated as part of his support to the Odia Movement for a separate province of Odisha based on Odia language. Now, having said this, you know, Gandhi, when he visited Odisha in 1921, 23rd March 1921, And uh, then he addressed a meeting in, in, uh, in the, on the saints of Kartujodi River, I think on 23rd March. And that speech is a great speech. You know, that speech, if you look at closely that speech, it uh, sends a very powerful message in the today's context. You know, today, for instance, Several leaders of our country, very important leaders who are occupying high positions in the state apparatus, they are uh, trying to suggest, they are suggest, they are suggesting that, you know, you know, there was a, a you know, Baraso Salki Gulami, 
1200 years of slavery in india you know they are they are referring to the mogul rule as the rule of you know rule which uh, enslaved india you know so you know in, it is in that context it is in that context that you know gandhi what he said in katak is very significant he said there was some kind of swaraj in during mogul rule and therefore therefore a shivaji could emerge to challenge the moguls or a rana pratap could emerge to challenge akbar because there was some kind of you know swaraj and then he said in during british rule we didn't have that kind of swaraj because here you know people were not able to challenge when the british rule adequately as much as shivaji did or rana pratap did so this articulation of mahatma gandhi on the soil of you know katak soil of odisha you know dispelling the notion that there was slavery during mogul rule and stating very categorically or, or asserting very categorically that there was some kind of swaraj during that period and therefore a shivaji could emerge a rana pratap could emerge assumes a significance to counter attempts you know to distort our history and even the same point was highlighted by utkal mani gopabandhu das in his you know masterpiece bandira atmakatha in bandira atmakatha you know if you read that you know great you know poem it's one of the extraordinary pieces of literature you know poetic literature of odia of odisha in bandira atmakatha you know gopu utkalamani gopabandhu das he invokes at same time yudhishthir akbar you know jesus christ and then he in invokes many hindu gods so what utkalamani gopabandhu das was trying to convey through bandira atmakatha was the diversity of faiths not you know the inimical relations or not the antagonisms among different faiths so while you know gandhi did it on the soils of katjuri gopabandhu did it in his numerous writings and one of those writings is bandira atmakatha so in bandira atmakatha he says you know, when the train he was you know he was being taken in the train to hazaribagh jail uh, you know he he says that uh, he, you know when the train reached bhadrak he said here in bhadrak people from you know their birth place till the cremation ground both hindus and muslims they share a culture a culture which is common to them and which is defining their identities they you know what you call destinies so he said you know this unity of hindus and muslims which is represented in bhadrak should be carried forward and then he said you know we need to respect both ved and quran you know uh, simultaneously you know ved or quran ko karo samajh jana so these are the you know ideas which were reflected in gopabandhu's writings you know which really count, which is which constitute a counter to the you know polarization narratives divisive narratives which are now being you know stressed and which define the politics in 21st century india which is very unfortunate so this legacy of gandhi and gopabandhu you know to counter divisive and collaborate you know in a polarizing narratives is of great significance at the same time you know if you look at uh, madhusudan das you know madhusudan das in his very first speech in utkal sammelan you know what did he say he said same thing what was said by gandhi and gopabandhu you know madhusudan das said utkal sammelan is a forum where there is no place for religious discourse neither the hinduism nor islam nor christianity nor any religion should be invoked in utkal sammelan you know utkal if you bring in religion 
any religion that would cause division that would cause all kinds of problems and therefore utkal should come similarly should be kept free from you know religious issues and 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 that is the spirit uh, which you find in the writing writings of uh, you know gandhi and gopobandhu so you know so this kind of I, these kind of ideas of uh, you know gandhi madhusudan das and utkal mani gopobandhu das they constitute the foundation of our secular republic and secularism there means coexistence of all faiths and not allowing any faith to define our common culture our common you know our religious our uh, governance our state and so and so forth and this is also enshrined in the constitution of india so what is there in the constitution of india is essentially those ideas those articulations and the spirit of those articulations of uh, you know gandhi utkal gopobandhu mansur das and and uh, you know utkal mani gopobandhu das so you know having said this let me uh, come to other uh, you know aspect of, uh, of gandhi uh, gopobandhu and uh, madhusudan das the, the this aspect is concerning uh, the concerning uh, you know the, the freedom struggle so for instance when when gandhi came to visit to odisha for the first time in 1920 or 21 you know he he met uh, you know gopobandhu he of course on the invitation of gopobandhu he came and uh, you know he wrote an article my odisha tour my odisha tour so that article is surprisingly a gopobandhu centric article you know he wrote about uh, one seva samaj established by gopobandhu he wrote about uh, you know this samaj the newspaper established by gopobandhu he wrote about uh, you know gopobandhu school in uh, you know sakhi gopal and then he wrote about his sacrifices so the entire article was gopobandhu centric and toward the end there was a small paragraph on lord jagannath so you know he gave much more importance to utkal mani gopobandhu you know then the importance he accorded to lord jagannath so that was the high esteem in which gopobandhu was held by mahatma gandhi and in another article you know he wrote gandhi wrote that uh, you know he found utkal mani gopobandhu and his associates you know eating only rice and dal occasionally they were taking vegetables and some drops of ghee and gandhi was you know anguished and said that they were taking such poor diet which might adversely affect their health so gandhi asked a question to gopobandhu don't you think such poor diet consisting of only rice and dal would uh, Would adversely affect your health, and Gopobandhu replied, "Can't we suffer that much for the cause of Swaraj?" And Gandhi was silenced. He wrote, "I was silenced by that reply." You know, because Gandhi thought only diet consisting of rice and dal would certainly impair health of Gopobandhu and his associates. But when he got the answer that can't they suffer for suffer that much for the sake of Swaraj? and he was silenced and then he wrote if i could get services of such dedicated people i could make india free in one year so in 1921 gandhi was thinking of making india free by within one year if he could get services of people like utkal mani gopobandhu das see to make india free in one year in 1921 was the goal of the freedom fighters because in 1920 lokmanya tilak passed away and therefore in 1920 a great campaign was launched that we should make india free in one year and then after meeting gopobandhu das gandhi said you know if i could get the services of people like gopobandhu india could be made free in one year so this is the significance of the leaders of odisha which inspired gandhi 
that yes, we can achieve independence. We could achieve independence in one year, provided we have people like Gopal Das. So the fact that you could not get, get independence in one year, this means India didn't have people like Gopal Das who could extend that support to Gandhi. So you know this is you know uh, wonderful uh, insights that you, we get from writings of original writings of Gandhi about Gopal the other point I would like to I would like to flag is that you know the the issue of eradication of untouchability remained a key component of the freedom struggle, and both Gandhi and uh, Gopabandhu struggled for eradication of untouchability, and Gandhi started a campaign in 19, 1934 only in Odisha that is called Harijan Padyatra. It was a historic Padyatra. And of course, the writings of you know, Gopabandhu clearly bring out you know, the determination of the <coughs> leaders of Odisha to you know, eradicate untouchability. Now, in the context of untouchability, let me now refer to Utkal Gaurav Madhusudan Das. Because Gandhi wrote that it was Madhusudan Das who taught Gandhi, you know, mark the words. He said, Madhusudan Das taught Gandhi that untouchability caused economic drain of India. Economically, India was drained <coughs> because of untouchability. Now, this economic dimension of untouchability, we know the spiritual dimension, human rights dimension, because of untouchability, people were treated as subhuman beings, people are treated with contempt, people are not even touched. So that degradation which was caused by untouchability to Hinduism and to human beings are well known. And Gandhi fought against it. Okay, but Utkal Gaurav Madhusudan Das, apart from outlining the degradation suffered by Hinduism, degradation suffered by human beings, he said untouchability caused economic loss to India. And he explained how economic loss was caused. He said the leather work was done by the so-called untouchables. And because untouchables dealt with the leather work, which is of great significance for the economy, that work was treated with utter contempt by entire society. Because leather work was treated with utter contempt by its entire society because of the practice of untouchability. So the economic gain that would have come from leather work, from trade of leather goods, that never happened. That suffered greatly. So then statistically he proved that because of untouchability, Leather work was treated with contempt, and because leather work was treated with contempt, India suffered economically. You know, this Madhusudan Das wrote with statistics, and Gandhi said that Madhusudan Das opened my eyes that you know we have suffered economically because of untouchability, and therefore Madhusudan Das established Utkal Tanere to you know make economic gain out of leather and he involved Dalits in the Utkal Tanere. Referring to Utkal Tanere, Mahatma Gandhi wrote that it is it was an educational tanere. In fact, he established his tanere in Sabarmati Asra. And repeatedly, even after death of Madhusudan Das, Mahatma Gandhi invoked the name of Madhusudan Das, saying that it was Madhusudan Das who underlined the economic dimensions or economic sufferings due to untouchability. Now, this is very significant because many of us know that Madhusudan Das was born in 1848. He converted to Christianity in 1868. So he was a converted Christian. In fact, he was the, at, at some point, he was president of All India Christian Conference, which was the apex body of the Christian, you know, Christian people, people pursuing Christianity in India. So, you know, you know, such a man was the founder of Odisha. He started the movement. 
you know, to establish a separate state of Odisha on the basis of language. And he underlined this aspect that we need to abolish untouchability not only to save human beings from degradation, save Hinduism from degradation, but also for economic empowerment of the people. So this economic dimension of eradication of untouchability is one of the fascinating dimensions that you find in Madhubabu's writings, which impacted the mind of none other than Mahatma Gandhi. The other aspect is that, you know, see, for instance, today we are confronting a situation in UP and many other parts of India of stray cattle. You know, because of the stringent policies, public policies followed by certain governments that, you know, there is a prohibition, rather a kind of a, people are scared of selling their cattle, people are scared of buying cattle, you know, people are scared of engaging in cattle trade. They are being lynched in the name of beef, in the name of uh, faith and all kinds of things. So the stray cattle menace has become a huge menace. You know, to agriculture, to food security, to livelihood, to lives of the people in UP. It became a big election issue, you know, during the last elections held in UP. Now, this stray cattle menace, you know, became a big menace and it is gravely endangering the economy of India. And therefore, people who, you know, you know, frame those policies, they were behind this crisis. And I, you know, I, at that time, I remembered one uh, phrase used by Madhusudan Das. He said, when people, you know, remained too much occupied with cattle, you know, because we are, you know, we are agricultural country. I mean, lots of people depend on agriculture. They don't have an alternative source of income for quite some time during the year. So, you know, Madhusudan Das has said, because people do not earn enough from agriculture and they spend a lot of time behind cattle, you know, they acquire bovine intelligence. Madhusudan Das. I mean, sarcastically, he was saying, this means they become dull. Their, you know, faculties become, you know, dead and dry. And he called it bovine intelligence. Because too much of preoccupation with cattle, you know, enable, I mean, they, you know, causes, you know, them to become dull, they become insipid, they lose their faculties, you know, so, so therefore, he was talking about, you know, Madhusudan Das was talking about skill development. You know, he was talking about skill development right from 1906 onwards. In numerous writings of Utkal Gaur or Madhusudan Das, you know, he said, there must be opportunities provided to people in villages who depend extensively on agriculture to develop their skills. And today we have, in the government of India, in the government of Odisha, separate programs for skill development. How relevant, how deeply, you know, how prescient was Utkal Gaurav Madhusudan Das to talk about skill development in the beginning of 20th century. And today, skill development occupies a major, you know, it, it has emerged a major plank of public policies of the governments, be it of the state governments or be it of the union government, you know, to develop skills, to make youths employable, to make them economically empowered. So this is the contemporary significance of Utkal Gaurav Madhusudan Das. The other aspect, which is extremely significant, and this point was also highlighted by Mahatma Gandhi. You know, he, and this point is concerning the gender equality of women's empowerment. Now, you know, let's focus attention on this issue. You know, apart from skill development, you know, this is a very critical issue on which you know both Gandhi and Utkal Gaurav Madhusudan Das, you know, paid attention very seriously. See, for, for instance, you know, uh, it was Utkar Gaurav Madhusudan Das who established a, initially a school. You know, then in 1913, it became a college and it is now known as Sarawala Women's College. So it was established in 1903 as a school 
by 1913 it became a college providing education for inter till intermediate so in 1913 you know Skutkar Gaurav Madhusudan Das could establish a school in Katak and Sarabala was made actually the headmaster you know Sarabala was the adopted daughter in fact to run the affairs of the school Sarabala was sent to Germany for training you know she thought that you know this he must get training in a european country where women are provided education in schools colleges and universities now 1913 madhubabu was establishing a college for women just imagine how far sighted he was and in 1913 if you look at the developments in other parts of the world be it you know uk or america remarkable things were happening concerning women's rights in UK, suffragette movement was on demanding voting rights for women. In US, also the you know there was a long march organized by women for voting rights. Eventually, they got the voting right. In America, women got voting right by 1920. In UK, they got the voting right probably by 1927. So when women were demanding voting rights in you know in UK and America. Madhu Babu was establishing a college for women in 1913. And mind you, that college which he established in 1913, you know, later in 1916, in Bombay, SMDT, Women's University was established. So three years before the first Women's University was established in India, a college was established for women in Katak by Madhu Babu. So look at the far-sighted vision of Madhubabu, which is of great significance, you know, for Odisha and India. The other point, which is extremely important, which is of national significance, is that it is because of Madhusudan Das, you know, the uh, law graduates, women, women law graduates could enter legal profession in 1923, 10 years after he established the first college for women. See, before 1923, you know, girls who did LLB or law, who, who passed out as a graduate graduate of law, graduation, passed out graduation on the subject of law, they were not allowed to do practice because the Legal Practitioner Act only allowed men to become lawyers. So when, you know, Sudan Subala Hajra, another adopted daughter of Madhubabu, she did her law and she applied for registration as lawyer in Patna High Court. The full bench of the Patna High Court rejected her application saying that the Legal Practitioner Act did not permit a girl to become a lawyer. Madhubabu filed a case challenging the decision of the Patna High Court in the Privy Council in London which was the Supreme Court. And in the in the petition which he drafted, you know, it is it was stated that half of the population in India they do not enjoy the rights of citizens. Rights of citizens. Now, can you imagine he was talking about half of the population of India saying uh, they, they never enjoyed the rights of you know citizens. This is a great uh, you know petition he drafted and submitted a petition he filed in the Privy Council in London, he was asked to pay 6,000 rupees that time, you know, as part of the cost of the, you know, Secretary of State for India. Then he wrote a letter to the Privy Council that this is a petition concerning public interest. So that, was, that petition was one of the earliest examples of public interest litigation. So Madhu Babu, in a sense, in this way, he actually pioneered the cause of public interest litigation, which we now wit we are witnessing in 21st century India in a big way. Either somebody goes to High Court or Supreme Court filing a PIL. Madhu Babu in 1921, he said, this is a cause concerning public. So therefore, this petition affects the public interest. And he requested for exemption from payment of 6,000 rupees and his request was accepted and he was allowed exemption. He never paid 6,000 rupees.
But after having heard the petition, the Privy Council ordered that this matter should be taken up in the legislature of India. It should not be you know, decided in the court. So Madhu Babu submitted a petition to the legislature. And then in 1923, a bill was moved in the Central Legislative Assembly of India, you know, amending the Legal Practitioner Act mm -hmm. and allowing women law graduates to become lawyers. So if today we are seeing women, law, women lawyers in India, across India, the credit goes to Madhusudan Das. So therefore, apart from establishing a women's college, he was creating, I mean, he was instrumental in taking up the cause of women lawyers who were not allowed to do practice because of the male-centric legal practice act, which was later amended because of his public interest litigation. So these are the wonderful contributions of Madhubabu, you know, in the, for the cause of women's empowerment. And these aspects were also highlighted by Mahatma Gandhi and Gopabandhu Das. For instance, Mahatma Gandhi, Gopabandhu Das, around 1923-1924, in fact, 1922-1924 to be precise, he wrote two articles in Samaj, Nari Sikha Bruddhi Pai Bhakti Pari. Another article, Nari Sikha. So he was attacking the conservative society, so conservative social values, which prevented women to have access to education. Okay, so so therefore, you know, this kind of challenge to patriarchy, you know, interrogation of the patriarchy was done by these three leaders. You know, Gandhi did it, Gopabandhu did it, and Madhubabu did it. Gandhi did it around 1922. By the time Gopabandhu was fighting, you know, fighting for the access of women law graduates to, you know, to legal profession. Around that time, Gandhi was writing Bal Poti, where he was talking about sharing of household work among men and women, so that there would be gender equality at home. Let there be gender equality at home. Let the household work be shared by men and women. Let women, men also remain engaged in doing the household course. And you know, that's a, he wrote a, a book called Bal Poti. Bal Poti means a textbook for school children. You know, in that textbook, there is a small chapter called Household Work, where actually there was an imaginary debate in a family which, among a sister, brother, and mother. Sister wanted to study and play, but uh, you know her brother told that, no, my dear sister, this is not your job. Look at mother, she's cooking, she's washing utensils, clothes. So you follow mother, don't go out and play or study. But sister was insistent. She was literally you know, adamant to, to do whatever her brother was doing. So they were fighting and the mother intervened and uh, you know, said that you know, household work should be done by both you know, men, and, men and women and so on and so forth. So that, you know, that book, book, a small book called Bal Poti, you know, uh, is now being, uh, you know, the ideas of that Balpoti are being reflected in many public policies of governments across the world. See, for instance, in Spain now, boys are being taught how to cook food in school. And that is being done primarily to, you know, ensure, uh, to, to ensure gender equality at home. In Japan, such literature is being spread through social media. And in India also, See, for instance, uh, in, uh, in t t television advertisements, I heard one advertisement in, you know, FM Gold in Delhi. You know, somebody called Mr. Uh, you know, some one person goes to his friend's house, Mr. Bharatwa's house. And uh, he says, Are Bharatwa sahab, aapka beti kaha? He says, beti bahar gaya hai, kuch saman lene ke liye, daftar bhi gaya hai, daftar se kaam karne ke baad aayegi. Beta kaha hai, beta khana bana raha hai, kitchen mein. Then that fellow asks, Are ye kya kar rakha hai? Beti bahar gaya hai, beta khana bana raha hai. Then that fellow says, No, no, mein dono ko saman adhikar de raha. You know, this was exactly the same thing which was written by Gandhi in 1921 in his Bal Poti. And Madhubabu was fighting for you know, rights of women to enter legal profession. And uh, Gopabandhu Das was writing about Nari Sikha Bruddhi Pai Vakipar. So look at the convergence of ideas. And those convergence of ideas constituted the bedrock of our freedom movement. You know, in some way or other, now those ideas are reflected in public policies. 
So, you know, this is the beauty and significance of uh, those three great leaders who, you know, are the builders of modern India. And the last point I wanted to flag is that, you know, the constitutional method. You know, F.G. Bailey, the great, uh, you know, social scientist from Oxford University, he wrote an article in 1959 in Economic Weekly, which is today known as Economic and Political Weekly. F.G. Bailey wrote an article called Oriya Movement, and he referred to Madhubabu. He said, what Madhubabu did was to adopt constitutional method for achieving his objectives for separate creation of a separate state of Odisha. Now, you know, even Gopabandhu Das, he was following Gandhi's method of nonviolence. And Gandhi himself, you know, was an exponent in practicing of nonviolence. And at the heart of nonviolence remained the constitutional method, not to engage in violence even in word, thought, word, and deed. So today, you know, see Ambedkar in his last speech in the Constituent Assembly, he said, now that we have a constitution, we should follow constitutional method to realize the objectives of the constitution. And if you do not follow constitutional method, then there will be grammar of anarchy. So today, you know, there is such a danger to the constitutional, you know, constitution itself, which is coming from different parts of India. I mean, the polarizing narratives, you know, some people say that they won't follow the constitutional method. You know, the manner in which the chief minister of, you know, Delhi, you know, his house was, he was, his house was, you know, people went up to his house, uh, you know, indulged in violence. These are all, you know, the methods which are, you know, contrary to the constitutional method. So, so therefore, the example set by Gandhi, Gopabandhu, and Madhubabu, you know, to adopt constitutional method and not to indulge in violence to achieve their objectives, you know, you know, it bears, bears significance for our time when, you know, there is some degree of violence which is threatening the very constitution, very republic. So, you know, you need to therefore combine their vision, their ideas, you know, and uh, celebrate Utkal Divas in this context. And, and, and in that context, this is the last point which I'd like to make. See, if you look at Utkal Sammilani, the resolutions of Utkal Sammilani, we find the vision of Odisha articulated by Madhubabu and all those who fought for the separate state of Odisha. See, in 1908, one princely ruler from, you know, um, the, there is a place called Chikiti, you know, the, the ruler of uh, the king of that area, you know, the, he he was presiding over uh, the Utkal Sammilani Conference uh, in Puri, 1908. And he made a fascinating point. He said, you know, the, the king of Surangi, king of Surangi, you know, he was presiding as the president of uh, the Utkal Sammilani. And in 1908, in his speech, he said, what Odisha would require is a program for afforestation. Can you believe a king in 1900, king of Odisha, a small princely, princely state of Odisha, Surangi, talking about afforestation? Today, afforestation has become a global, you know, policy, you know, planetary policy, you know, to plant more trees and save the planet from global warming and climate change. So that king of Surangi said, you know, so much land is required for agriculture purposes. And you need to get that land by clearing forests. But, you know, clearance of forest would take less time. But to create forest, it would take long, long time. So while clearing forest, we, not, we also must create forests. So creation of forest is nothing but afforestation. So in 1908, five years after Utkal Sammilani was established, even afforestation was stressed in one of the resolutions of the Utkal Samalini conference. So the vision of Odisha that they nurtured, you know, while fighting for the separate state of Odisha, that vision, you know, actually articulated the cause of sustainable development rooted in the idea of afforestation. The other aspect is that in all resolutions of the Utkal Samalini conference, there is a big paragraph concerning women's education. So just imagine, 
So, you know, Utkal, so today we are finding women, large number of women in universities, colleges, in schools, and now girls are riding cycles in villages. It's a delightful you know, sight to see girls riding cycles in villages and going to schools away from their villages. So, you know, this was emphasized by, you know, the leaders of Utkal Somalani who fought for creation of a separate state of Odisha. So what we see today in the program of afforestation, in the admission of you know, millions of girls in schools, colleges, and universities, a reflection of the idea of Odisha envisioned by you know, those, the, the great leaders of Odisha. So this is the meaning and significance of the celebration of Odisha Day. So thank you so much for your kind attention. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much, sir. It feels like keep on listening to you. So in the last 40 and 45 minutes, you have no touched upon so many fascinating facts. And in the interactive style, you have no highlighted many key points. So it seems like I have you know, already made eight pages of notes. And it will be very difficult for me to summarize, but you will know, keep it very short. So in your speech, you highlighted how the you know, stalwarts of modern India, like you know, the <clears throat> father of the nation, Gandhiji, Utkal Ramani Gopobandhu and Utkal Gaurava Madhusudan Das worked in tandem and you know, the, their convergence of ideas to make India free and you know, to bring real Swaraj and to create the first you know, state of Odisha on the basis of the language. And you very briefly highlighted and very interestingly highlighted the significance of Swaraj, the economic consequences of untouchability, the importance of gender equality, and then no, the provision for law for women, and now you also talked about you know, how Madhubabu initiated the school for PIL in the you know, law system, then uh, constitutional methods, accommodating all the sections of the people, and sustainable development, and all these principles are there in the freedom struggle, and this you know, great stalwarts are reflected in their thoughts, in their writing, and in their you know, actions. So thank you very much, sir, for such a stimulating you no know, talk on the occasion of Uttal Divas. So without you no know, uh, delay, may I now request the president of the meeting, Honorable Vice Chancellor of Kalahandi University, to deliver his president. Over to you, VCC. Thank you. It's a great talk. One of the great talks in Uttishtata, and particularly on the day of Uttal Divas. Very soon it will be uploaded in uh, YouTube and many alumni of this institution as well as many people in the different corners of the world will be able to listen this great talk. So thank you Satyabhai for uh, this memorable words which are with us. Uh, I don't think I should talk much after this uh, solid speech. Let it percolate into your brain and you think think hundred times about the words which are delivered to you. So I'll con conclude rather with a line of Madhusudan Das. He was a great poet. Jati itihasa jati ra nirjhara tohu bhoye sada Jati Pranodhara, Siddhararu Nira, Piyuchi Jainara, Nishchay Hevase, Jati Karma Vira. So we sing all the people to salute the people like Gopagandhu who has uh, sacrificed their happiness for the cause of the land. Again, it is the time to think of a land without poverty, think of a land with education, think of a land with a good green coverage. So again, thanking Sri Sahu for his presence. We are on the 48th episode of Kutishtata. Two episodes more to be 50. Uh, so I 
thank all of you for the cooperation because the listeners are our treasures the readers are our treasure treasures we club them up for this motivational series thank you thank you very much sir definitely the sacrifices of the great leaders will be remembered and it will keep on uh, motivating uh, down the generations to keep india united and the state to move on thank you very much sir so may i now request uh, sarita madam to tender the vote of thanks and the over over to sir sir thank you sir good afternoon everyone samastanku mora pranam odisha divas upalakhe samastanku mora hardik abhinandana thanks for giving this opportunity to deliver vote of thanks on behalf of kalahandi university in this august gathering of 47th motivational talk of utishtata on topic gandhi gopabandhu and madhu babu at the outset my sincere thanks and deep sense of gratitude goes to our invited speaker today's esteemed guest dr s n narayan shahu sir who is currently an esteemed visiting faculty in several universities including national law university delhi former joint secretary to rajya sabha secretariat and former director prime minister office a well renowned author of various books and articles a political scientist an influential critic great intellectual and a dynamic leader indeed sir we are really privileged and fortunate enough to have you today once again on the dais after our extramural lecture uh sir in a very short span of time you covered many aspect and really it is very difficult to summarize so it was really an outstanding enlightening and thought provoking session on this auspicious occasion of odisha divas you made us realize that we need to recall those historic initiative of our great leaders in a very constructive manner sir you highlighted the formation of separate odisha state on the basis of language and most importantly contribution of gandhi gopabandhu das and madhu babu the great three leaders as you mentioned that how odia language along with kosli and whole language of the state they got they got uh, equal treatment and specifically the role of western odisas and kosli language and other tribal languages as well sir you highlighted how gandhi got inspired by odia movement written by niranjan patnaik of ganjam district and really he expressed his hope that odia belonging to an ancient race and definitely they will succeed in getting separate set wonderful sir this is the very unknown fact for us and uh, sir you uh, talked about the secular dimension of utkal divas and uh, also you focused on how utkal sambilani is a platform which is secular and how it helped to have secular republic of india thank you sir so we should be mindful that secularism at the bedrock of odia movement sir you talked about eradication of untouchability and it was madhu babu who talked gandhi that untouchability is uh, consequently it is causing economic loss to india so thank you sir it is also we should know it how it help us and how it help us our great leaders like ambedkar and gandhi to uh, realize that how it is very necessary to eradicate, eradicate untouchability sir you highlighted on Ut utkal gaurav madhusudan das uh, idea on skill development making uh, making youth employed gender equality and women education and many more things sir so thank you so much sir and finally you talked about made us realize that formation of odisha state is not uh, simply like any other state rather than we have followed constitutional method and uh, that we got the recognition from the oxford university professor abzi valley who wrote an article on the odia movement as he mentioned the great contribution of madhu babu who followed the constitutional method thank you sir thank you so much for your wonderful talk sir in future also we are aspiring to listen you sir because we can listen you for a day two days week and month thank you sir again apan ko bahut bahut dhanyawad mora namaskar sir thank you thank you so much uh sir also yes <laughs> sir uh, my immense gratitude from our core of my heart goes to our honorable vice chancellor professor sanjay kumar satpathi sir who has been the driving force for us all of us all departments and without 
huge effort and inspiration definitely today we would not have get the chance to meet a personality like you so series of motivational talk like 46th already has been conducted and now we are at 47th and very definitely very soon we are going to conduct the 50th uh, motivational talk so thank you so much sir and it's my strong belief that in coming days uh, our kalahandi university is going to be the hub of intellectual engagement a space for generating original idea and once again a sincere thank to you sir thank you so much also i would take this opportunity to thank our esteemed registered sir pitambar bhoi sir for his welcome address and his kind words thank you sir i must mention my deep sense of gratitude for miss bidisha moon madam for her wonderful guest introduction and welcome address thank you ma'am thank you so much my deep sense of gratitude goes to our convener of this program professor major dr uh, jaydeep sahu sir uh, thank you sir thank you for your leadership and your immense potential to make this program successful also i would take this opportunity to thank our sanjeev sahu sir for his wonderful moderation and miss lipsar maharana definitely for her beautiful sang my deep sense of gratitude and hearty vote of thanks goes to all distinguished faculties my colleagues eminent personalities academicians my dear students and all sincere participants participants for their sincere participation and patience last but not least my thanks goes to mr vishnu choudhury our technical assistant of kalahandi university for his sincere cooperation and patience thank you all thank you so much Over thank you to very sir. much uh, to you too and uh, may i now request uh, miss lipsa moharana to uh, sing the shanti pa over to lipsa Miss Lipsa Morana for the Santi Pad. Uh, can you hear me, Lipsa? Your voice is not coming. You are there, but your voice is not. So on behalf of Lipsa, may I uh, have the opportunity to sing the Santi Pad? May I request Mrs. Sir to allow me to sing the Santi Pad? Sir, may I audible? Yes, you are audible now. Please go ahead. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhi Naha Sarve Santu Niramaya. सर्वे पश्यन्तु शांति 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 थैंक यू ऑल मे आई नॉट द परमिशन फ्रॉम द चेयर टू Declare the session to end. Ah uh, yes, Sanjeev, we can end up. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, sir. Uh, session comes to an end here. Thank you all once again for your participation. Look forward to seeing you in the next session.